follow along with me, please? Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling. But on the contrary, bless. For to do this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing for... Whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who... Who do evil. Please take your seats. The last time we talked about about things in verse 8 and how believers are to purpose in their thinking to live in harmony, to have unity, thinking of others, being sympathetic towards them, having a love so strong for one another as though it was that kind of love that is in a that is in a natural family and also having a deep down compassion for those who are hurting something something that is so inside of you as to coming from your insides a gut feeling to meet those needs of people who are hurting. But most of all, we are not to think of ourselves more highly than others. Purposing in our thoughts to have a humble spirit. Actually, in your mind, bowing down, not having a me-first mentality. Because I, I wish to tell you once again that life is not all about you. But now I'd like to switch things up. Going from how we think and how our emotions are, the inward things, to the things we do and what we say, the outward things. You see, without proper biblical thinking, the things that we do do not mean much. But when we are thinking biblically, then the words we choose and the things we do make a difference not only in our lives, but in the lives of other people. So, If you're looking at your notes there, we're going to go through the second part of growing into a balanced believer. The first thing there, as we see in verse 9, is have a forgiving nature. The verse reads this way, do not repay evil for evil, which means to have a bad nature or reviling, which means to, have you ever heard or seen those people who just rail, who just rail on someone, insult after insult, do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling. But on the contrary, bless, for this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing. You see, a true believer is never to react by returning evil to anyone. The world you live in often often mistreats people. And many times, a believer's suffering is even worse. Because of your commitment to Jesus Christ. And the world opposes 
the life we are called to live. Does it not? It sure does. Because God calls us to live righteously, to be pure, to be honest, to be truthful. And we are not to react in such a way. Why? Because Christ didn't. As what we already learned prior to this. Christ, when he was reviled, didn't revile back. When he was insulted, he didn't insult back. We are to bless people. We are to speak well of them. A common target in your world today is the President of the United States, especially among God-fearing, God-believing Christians. It's easy to do when, there's un, when there is an ungodly man in the White House. Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless. For this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing. We are to bless people. We are to pray for them. And I'm sure, I'm sure that that you know this. But please let me remind you once again that, that we are to be a blessing to people. Have a forgiving nature. Live by one standard. Proverbs 19.11 says, Good sense makes one slow to anger, and it is his glory to overlook an offense. It is difficult to forgive someone who has offended you, someone who has hurt you, someone who has done evil to you. Let me give you an example. I I am a Jew. According to... To Jewish law, I am to forgive someone three times. That's it. Could could you just turn over to Matthew 18? So here, as I came to know Jesus Christ personally... Still thinking Jewish law that I only have to forgive somebody three times. So I had a question for my Lord. I thought, well, I'll do better than that. I'll even more than double it. Look in verse 21. Then I came up and said to him, Lord... How often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Don't you think that's pretty Christian of me? Why? The law just required three times. I figured I'd do better. Seven. Don't you think that's good? Come on. Jesus said, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and his children and all that he had, and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees imploring him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. 
And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe me. So his his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have, you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you who do not forgive your brother from your heart. Live by one standard. You know what the double standard is here? He was forgiven, but he failed to forgive others. You see, that's why we were called. That's why you were called. Not to act like the world does, but better. Does anyone here have trouble forgiving people? If you do, I am so thankful that Jesus has more grace than you do. I am thankful my Savior is not as tough as you are. Lord, it got real quiet. Have a forgiving nature. Live by one standard. The second thing here is control your tongue. I thought I would hear a lot of amens with that one. (laughs) Control your tongue. Verse 10. For whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. It is so easy for us when someone, when, when someone wrongs us or, or even when evil is done with us, that we react with our own words. And you know what? Many, we give it right back to them. But a true believer isn't supposed to do this. It's easy to let our tongue run loose. He, and here, Christ is, is, is purposely focusing on our words, choosing the right words. Because a person who doesn't control their tongue, they retaliate, they argue, they gossip, they curse, they disrupt, they interrupt, they attack. And in fact, they are not only destroying the life of that other person, but they're destroying their own life. Look at the verse. Whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Because if you're not doing this, you must not love life and you must not want to see good days. One thing that has helped me is starting each day with prayer. Psalm 141 verse 3 says, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. This is a good way to start every day, every morning. Why? Before the very words you are going to speak, leave your mouth. Have a forgiving nature. Control your tongue. Choose to do right. 
The first part of verse 11 says, let him turn away from evil and do good. Imagine. Imagine you're walking and and as we follow Jesus, we, we had plenty of chances, plenty of opportunities walking down roads and we would come to a fork and we either had to choose to go this way or to go that way. But imagine yourself walking down a type of road like that and you having to choose which course to take, which road to take. And you make a deliberate choice on which road. And that's what I mean here. Choose to do right. Each each and every one of you, according, of, according to this verse, has a choice to make. Every one of you. Either make a deliberate biblical choice to do away with the evil things that are in your life that keep us from a close fellowship and relationship with Him, or keep doing evil. Keep doing the things that are just evil. There there isn't much difference in the evil in my day than the evil in your day. Lust, money, idolatry, you name it. It's just that you have more people. You have a lot more ways to sin. You know, wonderful electronic things that just bring all sorts of trouble into your home. Choose to do right. Let him turn away from evil and do good. That is like coming to the fork in the road and say, choose. Which way am I going to go? Choose to do right. Strive to be at peace with everyone. Let him seek peace, which is tranquility something that is exempt from rage, and pursue it. Do do you know those people? Do you know those people who just love to argue about everything? Nobody does. Okay. Even the most minute things, they argue about every little detail. The point is here is that every believer is to strive to be at peace with all men, even though peace with all men isn't possible. It's really, really quite silly when I see on these wonderful electronic boxes you have called televisions and how everybody is just seeking world peace. They have conferences, they have this and they have that. Can I tell you something? It's not going to happen. I hate to burst your bubble. Peace will not be restored on this earth until Christ comes back and sits on his throne. They can spend all the money, have all the conferences they want not going to happen. But the point is here is that some people are just troublemakers, some people are loudmouths, some people are criticizers, grumblers, self-centered, dividers, and the list can go on and on and on and on and on. But we are to pursue to have peace with all people instead of conflicts. This means, you know, do you know what this means? This means Believers have to change. This means because, what did verse 8 say? Have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Putting yourself under, thinking, thinking that, that you're no better no better than they are, even if you're right. And part, 
part of, of seeking peace and pursuing it with people who are troublemakers is to give up your right to be right. But some of you, some of you can't let go of that. You have got to prove your point. Even to the point of a relationship being broken. Believers ought not to act that way. Have a forgiving nature. Please, control your tongue. Choose to do right and motivate yourself to please Christ. If this verse isn't motivation for you, I don't know what is. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and His ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. The Lord knows all that you think. He sees all that you do. And we are all accountable to Him for our behavior. Look at the verse here. He looks at the righteous and knows what their needs are. He is ready to hear them. He is ready to answer their prayer. Now, that should beg the question to you to ask yourself, are my prayers being answered? Could it be that you're not living a righteous life? Remember, he is aware of everything in your life. He is aware, he is aware of everything in your life. Psalm 139 verses 1 and 2 say, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. But he also sees those who do evil. The ones who have wrong thoughts. The ones who can't or won't control their tongue. He knows them. The ones who choose not to turn away from evil. The ones who don't want to seek and and pursue peace. He knows them. He knows the Christians who want to be divisive. He knows the Christians who complain, who grumble, who criticize, who backbite, who plan evil things. But here is the confidence. Please, don't look at this as totally dark. This is the confidence. If I am growing in the Lord and changing, and I, if I have a forgiving nature, if I am purposing to control my tongue, if I deliberately are making the right biblical choices in my life and pursuing peace and pursuing righteousness, He hears me. He hears me. And he blesses me. But if I'm not, those things in my life are not going to happen. Remember, he is aware of everything in your life. Here's the point. Look at verse 8. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. These are the things we think and that we feel. And then he says, Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless. For this you were called that you may obtain a blessing. 
For whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking to see. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. What we think matters in what we do. Do you see it? Are you struggling with it? If you're not humble in mind, this ain't happening. If you're letting your words off your lips before you're thinking about them, this ain't happening. If your standard of forgiving others is higher than Jesus, I pity you. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Lord, this is a tough passage. This is a tough passage, Lord, because, because when I thought in my Jewish heritage that all I had to do was to forgive somebody three times, and whoop, that's it. You taught us that there's no limit to forgiveness. Lord, Help us to have a forgiving nature. Help us to control our tongues. Help us to choose to do right. Motivate us, Lord. Motivate us to do the things that are pleasing to you. It's a struggle for us, Lord. It is, and you know it. But through your grace and the power of your Spirit, we can do it. I pray this, Lord, for each and every person here. Lord, there are struggles all throughout this room here. Lack of forgiveness. Lack of controlling tongues. It happens. Not making the right choices and not being motivated to please you. Help us know, Lord, and help us remember that you bless those who will obey your word. And it's in your name that I pray. Amen. Who will obey your word. And it's in your name that I pray. Amen. Who will obey your word.